Hello, I'm Randy Barber, and welcome to Let's Talk Education, a chance for you to hear directly from the Boulder Valley School District about important topics in our schools and district. Uh, today, we are spotlighting an area that has been a long focus of the Boulder Valley School District, sustainability, and I'm really excited to welcome back uh, Dr. Gita Carroll, BBC Sustainability Coordinator. Hi, Gita. Hi there. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Uh, in a few minutes, we're going to be welcoming some additional folks to talk about the importance of this work and the partnerships. It really takes a, uh, a whole village to make this a success. But before we do that, I really want to dig into a few things that you've got cooking. Uh, you know, why don't you walk us through a little bit of the work that's been going on here in BVSD. And I do, I do want to remind everybody again, uh, if you have a, a question that you want to ask, uh, we are welcoming those on, on, on our uh, Bitly account. That's bit.ly slash let's talk BVSD. You can go to our Twitter or Facebook account. Um, but the district has really, you know, uh, has recently released a couple of big documents in this arena, including a report that documents the last 10, year, 10 years of work in sustainability. Tell us all about it, Gita. Awesome. Yes. Well, um, the district created its first sustainability plan in 2009, and we did updates in 2012 and 2015. And we recently completed the 2021 update last spring, celebrating 10 plus years of having the plan in place, although some of the work has been happening for decades, which we'll hopefully hear about from some of our, our speakers here too. So the sustainability management system outlines visions and goals and strategies for incorporating sustainability into operations and curriculum. Um, and it has helped us really acknowledge the work that we've had in this area, uh, coordinate as an organizational system at the district level, provide some meaningful metrics and measurements so that we can track our progress, and partner and align with local agencies. Um, it, this is a really important issue for a lot of our local communities, so it helps us work and support that as well. Um, so we had um, some really big highlights uh, that were outlined in the report that we released last spring and some of the work from the, the previous five years. So I'll just share a, a couple of those. Um, one, we, we've created a stretch goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 80% and becoming climate neutral by 2050. Um, and in the past five years, we were able to substantially reduce greenhouse gases by 13% from our, our baseline year. And this was um, primarily through reductions in electricity and natural gas and through transportation, which we'll um, also hopefully hear about a little later, some of the, some of the work we've done there. Um, the EVSD was also named the first real certified school district in the country. And this is presented to restaurants and food service providers who are really committed to promoting health and sustainability. And as anybody listening probably knows, our food service program is astounding for so many reasons, but one of the many is their commitment to um, supporting healthy foods, local foods, local farmers, um, and that work has really been recognized on a national level. Um, we've also had active green teams um, in the past five years at every single one of our schools, and they do things like support gardens at the school, um, support our recycling programs, uh, participate in energy competitions, and more. Um, and then we've been able to reduce energy, um, even though we have been expanding buildings and adding air conditioning, um, and, and energy reductions are really in large part to the energy improvements we were able to make through our, our bond and construction program. So we're really, that was a priority in that um, program and really, really paid off there as well. I uh, the uh, um, adults are, you know, it, the, no, yeah, we can keep going here. Um, I think the idea that the, you know, typically you have adults that are sort of leading the charge here, but a big element of this is really the kids are, are involved and really take the lead on it in a lot of ways, right? Absolutely. And they're, they are the heart of the program. They're why we're doing this program. So, you know, if we were, we could be operating as the most sustainable facility or organization on the planet, but we would be missing the whole purpose if we weren't um, educating the kids about why this is important and, and giving the opportunities for the hands-on, really living it day-to-day -day through the recycling and composting programs, through the walking and biking programs, and um, gardens and all of that great work. So yes, yeah, they're absolutely leading the charge. I did cut you short. So uh, were there other things that you wanted to mention in regards to the last 10 years? I think, well, there's a lot in there, and I will just mention that the report is now posted on our website. Um, we did, we made, uh, we've done a lot of work around indoor air quality, big, big improvements there as well, and um, our waste diversion efforts are a real area of, um, of highlight that we love to hear more from Cindra about, but um, have um, hit a 50% waste diversion target, meaning that more than half of the district's waste is diverted from landfill through 
things like reuse, repurposing, recycling, and composting. And we've done that um, in our day-to-day -day operations and also, again, in our bond and construction program. That alone is amazing. I mean, you could just say, okay, our work is done. But nope, that's not the way it goes here. Uh, you guys have an action plan that really looks ahead for the next five years. Is that right? Yeah, so excited to announce the new Green BBSC action plan for the next five years. Um, we did this plan in partnership with the Green Schools National Network, who's also here today. We can hear from Jenny Seidel a little later. Um, but staff has been leading a community effort to kind of report out on the progress that we made and also create this new action plan for the next five years. Um, so this work took place over the past year. Uh, it included um, many staff interviews, a community forum in March, followed by several focus groups, um, review and feedback from an ad hoc advisory committee, a lot of opportunities for community comment, and then we had final review by our um, district leaders over the summer and just presented the, to the board last week. And speaking, speaking of the board, I know that they have been a part, you actually have had a whole uh, committee of folks that have given you feedback, uh, have looked at you know, sort of the ideas that you guys have had, uh, that in additional things that they think are important. What's that process been as you guys have been forming this up? The process with the board, or yeah, I know that you guys had kind of a you know committee. There was, I know there was a big day where everybody came together or talking through. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like like I just said, we had a big community forum in March where we had um, a a lot of folks involved. We did have some board members. We had folks from a, a lot of our municipalities who are in the district. We we had parents, we had some students in, involved in that, staff, um, our community partners doing this work, and all came together and led, facilitated by the Green Schools National Network, gave us an opportunity to really to dream big and reimagine what we could um, look like moving forward. And while we have made great strides and great progress, we did, um, our new plan does look different based on that process in terms of um, where we're headed, so there's a new vision and mission. And we also um, have new categories in the plan. So our, our last plan was really operational um, heavy focus. So we, we big focus on materials, uh, building, transportation, and then also education, um, which is fantastic. But this new plan um, aligns, I think, really but more aligns with where we want to be headed. And so we have categories in um, leadership climate and culture, which is sort of our day-to-day -day that you were talking about, how, what, do, what does the day-to-day -day look like in our, um, any of our BBSC schools, and how can you see sustainability in action? Um, operations is still a key part of that, and then curriculum instruction, of course, is, um, is another um, important category in, in the fourth piece of the plan. I know you were just mentioning uh, the, the Green Schools National Network, and so wh why don't we go ahead and open up to the rest of the panel. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Jenny Seidel. Uh, she's with the uh, Green Schools National Network. Hi, Jenny. Hello there. How ladies. are you doing today? Very nice to be here. Excellent. Uh, we also have Sindra uh, uh, from our Echo Cycle. Hi, everybody. Hi, Sindra. Uh, how are you doing today? Not bad. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Amy Thompson, uh, BBC Transportation, as well as Safe Routes to School Coordinator. Nice to be here. Hello. Hi there. Um, and we may have uh, a special guest today, uh, Joe Chavez, who's the AP over at Ryan Elementary, may be joining us from the road by phone. Uh, we don't oftentimes get to have a, a remote reporter or uh, somebody join us from the, from the road, so uh, that will be a whole new adventure here. Um, but uh, really excited to have all of you guys join us uh, here. Um, you know, because as Gita said, it really does take, uh, you know, a whole village of folks to support kids. This plan is really built around the idea of partnership. Um, and so, you know, Gita, if all these folks that are on this call with us are, are key to this to this work, right? Oh man, it's incredible, and I just it just makes me smile being on the phone with these folks because you know I, I don't what is the saying about we just we stand on the shoulder of giants, but these, these are the giants who are in the room. These are the folks who've been doing the work for decades and just so. It's, it's awesome to be <laughs> in a community of support with these women. So really, really excited to have them here today. Okay, so let's get to know our folks a little bit better. Uh, Jenny, why don't you tell us a little bit about that Green School Network? Sure. Network. So um, we are actually honored to have Boulder Valley as part of the Green Schools National Network. We are a, a network of school districts and schools across the country who have prioritized um, sustainability as one as a driver of innovation across all 
of the different systems that that make a public school or a public charter school function. Um, and so we've been um, we've been around since 2007. Um, started the national conference. Um, we published the Green Schools Catalyst quarterly. I don't know if we can put links in the chat. I can do that for people to have access to these resources. Um, and then we started this network of districts and um, schools to have them come together to share their work. Um, our vision is that every child in this country attend a healthy, equitable, and sustainable school. And Boulder Valley, the, the first round of school districts and schools that are working with us are really out on the forefront. We call them early adopters. Um, and Boulder Valley has been one of the leaders um, in the movement since, um, since it started. Um, and like, I, like Gita said, it's just been a joy working with the district on this new action plan, um, on the report and the action plan um, moving forward. So um, the shifts that they have made with the design of the, of the action plan are significant um, from, where, from the action plans that they've had in the past. Um, the actions identified related to leadership, climate and culture, um, and curriculum and instruction are very robust and, and exciting to see a district the size of Boulder Valley doing this, this level of work. Um, and then the facilities and operations um, portion is always where Boulder Valley has led um, the movement, and so um, we're excited to see them taking steps in these other three sectors um, and other, we call them um, impact levers. Um, so we're super excited about their action plan and, and our partnership moving forward. I can imagine that, you know, you think about these schools that are across the nation that are doing this work. I mean, obviously you think about Green Ribbon and all these other things that, that people are working to earn. Um, is there constantly like a, a cycle in which people are thinking about new ways to do this, that new, uh, and then sharing those ideas among schools? Is that something that you see a lot of? Oh, absolutely. Uh, when we first started the work um, way back, um, there were individuals in, in schools that were highly um, passionate about the work, and so trying to, trying to change their schools or change their, their districts just by themselves doing um, small initiatives. And, and over time, since 2007, I think we launched the national conference in 2010, you know, we've seen whole schools and whole districts take on this um, mantra, and we see it as systems transformation work. Um, we know that, you know, creating a sustainable future is not going to happen. Um, by just with everybody recycling, it's going to happen by changing the way we operate all of the systems that function together to create quality of life on this planet. So um, the districts, the, I'm so excited about the district level work that we're doing across the country um, because it does show that the much um, deeper commitment um, it takes the Board of Education, it takes the superintendent, the superintendent's cabinet, every decision maker in a district to understand that they have a part in this, that it's not just um, how we operate our buildings, it's how we treat each other, it's how we um, greet each other, it's how we teach, it's what we teach and where we teach. So all of those things um, shape how we see ourselves in relationship to um, both other humans, but also the more than human community that, that really sustains life on this planet. So um, it's, it's critical work and, and we all know how important it is as we see fires and climate crises, crises increase across the country. We know that this is where K-12 schools need to be moving to make sure that our young people know how and what they can do to create a, a quality of life on this planet for the next generations. I also just love what you said in regards to, you know, the leadership being part of it. Uh, you know, I know that uh, having the superintendents buy-in and, and backing 
you know, so one of those things when you know that the people in your building are behind it, it's, uh, you know, it makes it easier yeah. to apply elsewhere. Well, one of the beautiful things that I, I think we can also lift up about Boulder Valley is your sustainability management system has survived through a transition, a superintendent's transition. And, and that, I think, is a testament not just to the superintendent, but to the community um, and all of and the priorities that have been set by the community and by the Board of Education. And oftentimes, a superintendent will engage an initiative like sustainability, and when that individual leaves, the initiative leaves. But that has not happened in Boulder Valley, and I think that is a celebration that many people don't recognize. You know, I, I couldn't have said it better. The, my transition to EcoCycle was really going to be the fact that we have so many schools that are participating in that, and it really has, has transcended uh, administrations, that it's been here for some time. Senator, do you want to talk about, I, uh, there's a, a number to this, uh, how many schools we have. Is it like three-fourths of our schools? Uh, um, in, in terms of, um, of okay. various, yeah, various programs, it's actually every school. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Yes, it's every, it, it is every school. And yes, um, you're right, the longevity that, that, and um, interest over time in sustainability and, uh, is in Boulder Valley has been very, very consistent. The EcoCycles partnership with Boulder Valley goes back 36 years at this point. And um, it was uh, Boulder Valley participates in the Boulder County School Recycling and Environmental Education Program. St. Brain also participates in that as well. And um, it was originally started by Boulder County Commissioners 36 years ago. And uh, EcoCycle has been uh, running it for 33 of those years and myself for 31 of those years. So it, it, it all goes way back. Um, and, and it's been an exceptional par partnership. Um, where we sit right now, um, the, the program um, is the largest local environmental education and recycling program in North America. And well-known university professors actually use it as a model program in their master's degree programs, et cetera. I've, I've heard that. Um, and it, it started basically uh, with recycling and waste education and recycling collections. And uh, every school in the district has participated in that for the last 35 years. Um, 15 years ago, what came to pass was that that um, and we were we are the district's contractor to, to keep that moving. Um, and so what happened was 15 years ago, we had some principals, some parents, some teachers uh, approaching us who'd been involved in the program, and they basically said, "Okay, we got it. We got recycling. We've been doing it. <laughs> um, what's next? What can we do that's more?" And so. Um, in response to that, we launched the Green Star Schools program, and that's 17 years ago. And um, it, it is the most comprehensive zero waste schools program in America as, as well. And um, Jenny is absolutely right. Doing things on a district level um, is uh, super important and uh, super impactful. And so uh, the program really stands in Boulder Valley and St. Rain as well really stand out from the perspective of, of being really committed on a full district level, not just when there's um, in individual schools, there's a champion and then it kind of wanes when that person leaves. And, um, and so the Green South Schools program, the schools not only recycle, they also compost and, uh, and collect compost and they um, engage in various waste reduction activities and initiatives and um, as Gita said, typically a school can reduce its weight to anything from 30 to 70 percent, so a, a good average of 50, so we're doing quite well there. Um, and it's not just about um, reducing waste, it's about changing the culture, it's about educating the kids, it's about self-responsibility for the students and for, for the staff and, and contributing to, to the health of our community, our planet, our, all of our personal health. And, um, and uh, so there is a, a very large environmental education program associated with everything that we do. Uh, within Boulder Valley, if, um, we do about 1,700 presentations a year. And we see probably, with just within Boulder Valley, we see probably um, 35, about 35, 38,000 students and staff a year. So it, it really is on a very comprehensive 
intensive level. And it's not just about waste. Uh, you know, we work with Gita and, and uh, we get as much diversion out of the landfill as we can. But the, the kids and um, our community children are learning about energy conservation, water conservation, air quality, indoor air quality, hazardous waste reduction, um, as well as forestry topics to help motivate them to, to save that paper and that aluminum. So, so it, it is very comprehensive environmental education that the district is sponsoring for um, every child and every school participant. And it really is one of those things where, you know, uh, these schools proudly display their banner. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I've been to several of the ceremonies. Uh, they, I mean, it's just a, a really big moment for a school. Plus, my favorite thing, in fact, uh, you know, when Rob, when, once Rob got here, uh, Dr. Anderson, uh, our superintendent, um, some of the schools actually make it into sort of a competition. So it's like, you know, what thing do you put where? And it was a race. And uh, it was so much fun. Like they, they make it into, you know, these, these events that are, that are memorable for students that, you know, A, that they won this big award, but B, you know, they could be part of this change that can happen together. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the most inspirational and heartwarming pieces of uh, my job is not just what, what Gita and I and, and the principals put in place in the schools, but what the schools do themselves, what the kids come up with themselves um, in order to add new aspects of waste reduction to their school. Um, that's, that's one of the greatest rewards uh, of the program. Um, a very short anecdote, I think, is that when I uh, began this program, um, working with the elementaries is, of course, where you need to start and to change behavior, but, uh, but also it's, it's the easiest one to knock off. And uh, the, or the elementaries, and I figure, well, you know, by the time I get to middle and high school, I'll be retired, and <laughs> somebody else can take that on. And literally, what happened was uh, that elementary graduates from the, from Green Star schools were going to their principals at the middle school level and saying, "What's going on here? Why aren't we composting?" And so, um, so the pressure was on, and the principals were calling me. It's like, okay, <laughs> I don't get the rest of my laurels. We're going into middle schools. We're going into the high schools, and um, and that, and so the kids really take it seriously, and they really feel strongly about their ability to make an influence. Uh, yeah, I love it. Um, this work also caught the attention of Recycle Colorado, which recently gave BVSD an award. Um, yes. Something about outstanding outreach. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Yes, exactly. So, um, so yes, Boulder Valley and, and St. Brain Valley jointly received that award for their participation um, in waste diversion at a very high level uh, through the program. Yeah. I will say firsthand for my own daughters that, you know, between uh, turning off the water while we're brushing teeth, which is not exactly what you're talking about, but also making sure that those things get in the right bin and all that kind of stuff, they are good carriers of that, of that message. And I think that means that it really is it's far wider than just what's happening in the school building, right? I mean, it's hopefully something that's making a change throughout our community. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We do hear from CU that they can tell when they have graduates of Boulder Valley School District because they come to CU already with a strong environmental ethic. But I've heard that multiple times from staff at CU. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. It works. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, another big way that we get students engaged is directly uh, in our efforts is, is through our, uh, choosing sustainable modes of transportation. Uh, Amy uh, Thompson is here. I'd love to have you kind of talk about how we engage students. Uh, obviously, most people think about the big yellow school buses, and that's an important part of it, uh, but you guys are working on far more than that. And that is an important part, um, but there's much more, and it's an exciting aspect of sustainability because kind of like Cinder said, it's something that the kids can truly contribute to and that decision they make in the morning on how to get to school truly does have an impact. Um, so every day within the BBSD, we have about five to 6,000 kids taking the yellow school bus. But we have like 29,000 kids in the district. So we've got all of these other kids that we have to come up with some choices for. And um, so my job on the Safe Routes to School team, along with my colleague Landon Hillier, just to bring them some, some options that are other than the single family car arriving at school. Um, so we like to promote walking and biking, um, carpooling, even taking the RTD. Um, so that's kind of what our, our mission is. And the way that we do that um, is one is just encouragement and having fun. Um, so for example, we've got a really big event coming up here on um, Wednesday, October 6th. It's a national walk to school day, so there'll be 
schools are around the country encouraging kids to walk to school. Um, so it's something we've been celebrating in the BBSD for over 13 years, and we'd like to make a big to-do here. Um, we're typically the district in the state that has the most participating schools. Um, and so we do things from handing out some stickers provided by the Colorado Department of Transportation. We've got banners from Dr. Cog that the kids can sign when they get to school. Um, we've, we're partnering this year with a great organization called It Could Be Me, and they promote uh, road safety. And so they're providing us with some bicycle lights and some reflective gear for children. Um, and we are partnering with Syndra um, <laughs> with EcoCycle. This is a tradition we've been doing for many years. Uh, where we're going to be doing used to shoe collections. So we put a box at every school um, who would like to participate, and they collect used shoes. And typically, we uh, divert over a thousand pounds of um, shoes away from the landfill um, and get them to places where they could be reused or recycled. So that's exciting. So that's a big celebration coming up very soon. Um, that same or next week um, will be our first Trip Tracker survey coming out. So Trip Tracker is a program that we have 34 schools in the district participating, and um, kids can earn Trip Tracker dollars <laughs> for biking or walking, carpooling, uh, taking the yellow school bus or the RTD. And um, these dollars are like real cash money, um, so the kids can choose; they can donate it to their school. There's about a dozen or so nonprofits locally that they can donate it to. Um, also, we've got several dozen local businesses who will accept these dollars as cash, and so the kids can buy themselves a treat or maybe some sports equipment and play, play it against sports. Um, so it's a fun way for the community to get involved and support the kids in making um, green transportation choices to go to school. And I kind of sort of like what, I was just going to say, similar to what Cinder was talking about, that by getting kids to do this, by recognizing that they can walk to school or bike or all these fun things, that they then realize that they could do that. And I mean, I love there was a story, I think a couple of years ago, where a girl rode like essentially every day to school. I think it was here in Boulder Valley. Um, I mean, that, that really can influence them when they go off to college, as she was mentioning, or, or further on into their careers, right? Oh, absolutely. I've, you know, it starts at the elementary level, kind of like Cinder said, but it grows to the middle. And high school, we've got a wonderful um, high school mountain biking program within the district. Um, kids go off to college and they're like, you know, realizing they don't need a car. They can bring a bike and they can get around campus um, just fine. Um, it's great that the more kids are getting out there um, and riding their bike, there's so many benefits. It's not only um, just being in touch with nature and stress reduction and it's good for your physical health and your mental health, um, but it's also teaching kids like transportation literacy and like how the rules of the road go. Um, and it's a good introduction for as they get older and if they do learn to drive, um, they already have a good foundation for um, navigating the road. So there are so many benefits plus the confidence that kids get when they can get themselves on their own, under their own power somewhere, and not having to depend on mom and dad to drive them everywhere. Absolutely. I can, I can vouch for that, that confidence of I can walk to school by myself. Dad, mm -hmm. It's huge. Okay. Huge. Yeah, absolutely. It feels like a theme that we're kind of talking about is really this idea that the, the, these little things, that, or they feel like little things at school, uh, by implementing those, it can make a big change. And I think right now, I mean, that big... Uh, uh, global change uh, document that came out, the big report, can kind of make, I think, people feel a little bit, like, overwhelmed by, like, okay, the world's ending, you know, I mean, I don't want to be Debbie Downer here, but but it does feel like so much is going on, and I think as an individual, you can kind of feel like, I, I don't know where to even start with this, but these are the kinds of things that, that can spark a greater change, right? I don't know who wants to talk to that, sorry. I'll, I'll start. I'm sure everybody can join in, but I mean, absolutely. It's not only that these are the types of things that can spark it, but that's, this is it. This is how we do it. This is how we live sustainably on this planet, and it's just the day-to-day, -day. and I know, you know some people will say, well, our school is not a sustainable school because it doesn't have TV, but meanwhile, you know, every single kid there knows how to sort their compost and bring their reusable lunch and is biking to school, you know, and that's that's what it is. That's it's you know it's this culture and it's our day to day, the everyday actions, and that's that's the only way we're going to get change. Um, so we we are living it and continue to live it <laughs> the best we can. And I'm sure others have. 
more so yeah. Randy, one of the things that is a, a driver as an as an organization, as a nonprofit organization, you really, you know, have to do a lot of thinking about your theory of action and, and all of this sort of thing. And, and um, um, 50 percent of the people in this country are actually influenced by what happens in public education. 50 percent. So um, when you think about parents, grandparents, um, other, you know, businesses, people who are engaged in businesses and that sort of thing. And so when we think about the critical um, processes that are needed um, to slow climate change, to even, you know, to address and to achieve some of the goals that are being set forth now um, by the United Nation, Nations, but also by each country. Unless we do this in school every day with every child, we are not going to achieve our goals. We're just not. And so when when I hear Sindra and Amy talk about the programs that every child is engaged in, not in, in many schools and school districts, you might have one teacher in a building that gets 30 students every year. Just those 30 kids in that school are getting a teacher who has a passion and a commitment to this. And so it's only those 30 kids, and it's only one year out of 12, <laughs> you know, that is influenced. What's happening in, in Boulder Valley, which is so beautiful and, and so much aligned with the systems transformation work that we're doing, is that every single child is being influenced by every program um, that, is, that is being implemented at Boulder Valley the decisions they're making around indoor air quality, around outdoor learning spaces, around um, you know, healthy, beautiful learning environments, um, the recycling, the food systems. We're moving, you know, things will be moving a little bit more in the teaching and learning integrated into the curriculum, not to discount anything that Cinder's group is doing, but more integration you know, in the content areas, because there's a lot of science to all of this, and there's a lot of social science to all of this as well. And kiddos are com compelled about, by this. So um, I, that's the, when we think about why and the importance of it, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. And, and when done well, it saves the district money. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's green and green, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> uh, Sindra, did you want to add something? Sure. I can add um, that the, the, the longevity of, of this program, um, which I think is somewhat un unusual, the longevity of this program um, is partly due to the fact that it has multiple funders. So the funding for uh, what EcoCycle specifically does in, in the schools comes from the district. It comes from Boulder County. It comes from the city of Boulder, town of Superior, um, grants. So, so that has really contributed greatly to the longevity. And the reason that the county commissioners and the various city councils have, have repeatedly renewed contracts and supported this program, some of them for 36 years, others for 20 years, 15 years, um, is because they recognize the, that they're really getting a, the bang for their buck by working with children and working within the schools, right? Because the children then influence what happens in the home as well as growing up with another, uh, uh, growing up with a, with a renewed behavior and um, values on the importance of sustainability. And so, you know, part of what Jenny keeps alluding to is that it, it really is about cultural change and you have to start with the children. They are more open-minded. And, um, and, and so, so it, it, as Skeeta says, it works. The impact is there. The impact is real. Um, we certainly see it in, in the way the number of high schoolers that like say, oh, I remember you. You were an elf in my first grade class. We get when they run into one of my staff in the grocery store. It, it, it really it really does work. And, and we are very fortunate that our local government 
officials have recognized that and continued to prioritize this program for for decade after decade. And 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 that's I think really significant. Yeah, it's it is amazing. Uh, again, going out to these events when we have the Green Star to see the commissioners. I mean, they they've got a busy schedule, but they yeah. they typically come out. Obviously, we've had a little bit of a pandemic, uh, in which that hasn't been possible lately, but. Uh, uh, they always make that time, and I think that really says something about the county's, uh, you know, dedication to this program. And three de again, three decades. I just want to bring attention yeah. to that. Mm -hmm. That is, I mean, I don't, I can't think of many many programs that that are that long serving. So well done there. Um, speaking of the pandemic, uh, I know that we uh, that Joe hasn't joined us yet, but but I do want to make sure that we touch a little bit about outdoor learning. Uh, Gita, you know. This has been a natural option as we've, you know, sort of talked about keeping kids safe. The opportunity to sort of bring them outside. Uh, it's, we live in a beautiful place that, you know, a good chunk of the time, you know, isn't too snowy, isn't too cold, isn't too hot. You know, it's it's a Goldilocks of uh, of places to live a lot of the time. Uh, maybe not the last couple of weeks when it's been in the 90s, but um, you know, the idea of, of taking kids outside where again it's safer um, and and them learning out there. Yeah, thanks, Randy. So kind of like a lot of this, I, you know, we, we've certainly had a community supportive of environmental education and getting outside for a long time. Um, we know that there's emotional, physical, academic benefits to kids getting outside. We've had really great opportunities through our gardening program and through an amazing field trip to Sombrero Marsh or up to the mountains. Um, that said, last year absolutely put a spotlight on outdoor learning in a way that we have never had before. Um, and we were able to use the opportunity to set, really look at our um, all of our properties to say, all right, where can we get kids outside learning? Um, it has all these other benefits and it is safer during the pandemic. And like you said, you know, we're so lucky to live in this beautiful place. Every single one of our schools has area and space around the school where you could, where you could take kids. Um, we were able to build some of that up through grant support, be able to get some materials um, to, to a variety of schools, things like wagons or whiteboards or voice amplifiers. Um, our IT department stepped in and extended Wi-Fi outdoors because we had a lot of people doing hybrid learning um, due to the pandemic, so you needed to have that access back and forth, um, some shade structures, and really just able to look at, look at our properties in a whole new way. Um, to the extent that I'm so excited is a huge part of our new action plan in a way that it really hasn't been recognized and elevated. So we um, have committed to continuing to now when we're assessing our buildings for future needs and um, possible building assessments, we're going to also be looking at out, the outside and saying, all right, let's look and how can we design for green schoolyards and outdoor learning and have increased shading and increased engagement using looking at our property, not just at the building, but beyond. So really so excited about that work. And then not just having the spaces, but then how can we continue to support our teachers so that they have the skill set and the confidence to take the kids outside and um, really engage. And going back to this whole idea of, again, about partnerships, you mentioned, you know, that the teachers, you know, needed certain supplies when they went out there. And our partners at, I think it was EcoCycle, right, um, mm -hmm. helped us with, you know, with some of those things that they needed, whiteboards. And uh, was it Charm yeah. 2 that was part of that? Yeah, it was the Center for Hard to Re uh, Recycle Materials, which is EcoCycle in the city of Boulder. Um, uh, did a community collection for kind of secondhand used materials good in good condition for things like wagons, whiteboards, stools. So we were able to collect some materials through that and, and redistribute to our schools. Um, we, yeah, Thorne was another amazing partner who did a, a lot of kind of professional professional development and kind of how to and work with um, kids outside our garden partners another great great example and um, so much so that we actually created a local outdoor learning group that includes a lot of these partners um, some of the municipalities a lot of folks from our schools to figure out how what the schools needed and how we can continue to support them and we're, we're still meeting um, there's a national level effort on this that has just oodles of amazing resources and assessments that we've help use to figure out what, what we could do at our sites um, that they are still meeting as well. Um, I'll just give one more example. An environmental design class at CU, a group of master's students worked with four of our schools last year and uh, to selected another four this year to really design out, work with the community and design out what, um, what it could look like, kind of on a scale, like what we could do today and what we could do in the future. Um, so just 
amazing ways, again, that our community and our partners came together to, to support this work. So. And Sindra, I can imagine that people were just probably overjoyed to be able to help in some way during the pandemic and, and to help kids and get them outside and learn. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that that was something that you guys were excited about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, who, we, we, when we set it up and Gita asked us, we didn't really know, you know, what what contributions and how much and how well this was going to work. And um, but we promoted it, and the district promoted it, and um, and it went really well. So that there were definitely quite a few parents out there who who were happy to donate things, get them off of out of their basement, and have them be useful. Yeah. So yeah. Awesome. Again, I do want to make the connection to, you know, uh, you were mentioning about the action plan in the future that outdoor learning will be part of it. How does this tie to the, you know, we, we were talking so much about the strategic plan altogether for all students. You know, a big part of that, you know, the main three things are ignite, equip, and soar. We want kids to, to be excited about their learning. And I mean, you know, when I, when I watch kids go outside, the excitement level goes up. And when they are tied to things like science or their they're using their hands and their feet, you know, they're going through a stream or, I mean, there's just so many opportunities right near our schools. And that kind of thing is so tied to what we're trying to do, right? Oh, absolutely. It's spot on. And we really did to make sure that this work in this new Green Media FD action plan is aligned with our strategic plan and the goals there. But yes, we know this is real world. This is learning. This is it. When you get a kid outside and uh, working with a tree and, and using that, for um, the science lesson versus, you know, reading about it on the screen or whatever, that's, that's when magic happens. And like you said, Randy, I mean, you, you, the energy level, uh, not energy, you, the enthusiasm goes up when you're outdoors. It's just a different kind of learning and a different kind of engagement, and it's, it's palpable. Well, I think so one of, or two. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Jennifer. Oh, I was just going to yeah. say, Randy, one of the things that I, again, working with the team, and ensuring that the strategic plan was on the forefront in, in their action plan. The vision for the action plan is all together for all students and the planet. Right, right. So, you know, it was just, it was <laughs> like, it's all connected. And so I, I found that, again, the team was attending to that strategic plan and wanting to say, we could go a little further. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I think about like the equip part, you know, we want to help kids that, that need that, uh, you know, additional opportunities that, that, yeah. that need to get to a place, uh, you know, uh, especially our students of color. I think about, about all these opportunities, when you think about nature and the, the effect that it can have on a kid um, that's different than being in a classroom environment. I mean, all this stuff, uh, also the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm kind of all over the place here, but the e-movement efforts, I mean, all these things really are, can be, should be interconnected. It's, it's wild. I just love it. So, um, yeah, I could go on and on. <laughs> I guess why don't we do this? Um, we're, we're getting close to the end of time. So why don't I go around the circle and have everybody give an opportunity to, if there's something that you kind of felt like you wanted to add or one last thought that you want to leave everybody with, I'd love to hear that. Um, why don't I start with you, Sindra? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I guess the I, from the hopeful perspective, right? You know, the, the, there's always a lot of doom and gloom in our lives these days. Um, but I, I would have to say that what what we experience and my educators experience going into the schools um, is a level of concern and interest and enthusiasm among the kids that that makes you realize that, that the future can be better than now and that we are raising a generation who, you know, it's going to seem like second nature to rather than going out on a limb or, or I, I, and, and what political party am I in and that's how I'm supposed to think. I think we are raising a generation that will think that this is just the way things are done and that is, of course, our goal, our end goal. Awesome. Uh, Amy, what would you like to say? Uh, well, one thing I wanted to mention I hadn't got the chance yet is I really, really wanted to acknowledge the excellent work of my colleague, Landon Hilliard, um, who was able to procure the first electric bus, um, school bus, in the state of Colorado for our school district, and that's very exciting. Um, that's, it feels like a new sort of generation of transportation, um, and it's going to save the, the school district money not only on fuel but on maintenance. Um, and one little sort of happy um, 
So the outcome of it is the electric school bus is very quiet. <laughs> and our drivers have, have said that um, student management is just so common there and student management's been really easy. So um, we're excited to get some more electric school buses. Uh, Landon's applied for some more. And so um, that is the future. Um, and then just transitioning back to the biking and walking. Um, yeah, I just think it's just such a great opportunity when, you know, when families wake up in the morning, it doesn't have to be that single family car every, every day. There's, um, there's some other options and there's some ways that the kids can make an impact on the planet and have a good time and build community. It's really one of the best reasons why I always enjoy biking and walking to school is, um, it's very social, it's outside, it's COVID friendly, and you just get to meet with your neighbors, you know your neighborhood, you feel the season. And I would encourage everyone to kind of think about that as we're thinking about um, getting their kids to school every day. Yeah, really, really change your perspective. When, you're, when you walk to school, uh, you got that time. It doesn't feel as rushed. Uh, you, yeah. can, you know, the birds and all the things. The fall is coming in these crisp mornings we've been having. We still have summer in the afternoon, but a little bit of fall in the morning. A little bit of quality time together. Um, and I'm so glad that you brought up the electric bus. I mean, when you talk to those drivers, they I don't know if you've ever driven in one of these things, but there is a get up and go that they appreciate in these things uh, uh, that, that you wouldn't think of. When you think about an electric bus, you, you know, I, I don't know. I always thought that would be sort of like twimpier. Um, man, those things kind of have a little bit of take. Uh, so they, they, they are so excited to get to drive these, these vehicles. And, and I know, uh, honestly, too, uh, one other thing to mention that, you know, Boulder Valley has long been looking at, you know, alternative fuels and that kind of stuff. So really like continuing that leadership as well. Yeah. Well done. Well done. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Um, let's see here. Where have I not gone? Jenny, I don't think I've hit you yet, right? No. Okay. Did we? Yeah. Well, I, um, again, I want to express the um, gratitude to Boulder Valley community for the long-term engagement and commitment. I, I think that, um, it is really important to have early adopters who are not afraid to share their story and to share their work. Um, and that's what part of being um, a part of the Green Schools National Network is, as we work with you to document and tell that story. So, um, so I want I, the gratitude um, and the, you know, the awe, the sense of awe, um, you know, it, is, you know, see the color of my hair. I've been at this for a long time and to be able to see, um, and, you know, Sindra, you've been at it a long time too. And to be able to see that it continues to grow and expand, um, is just beautiful. Um, it does give me hope, um, even in the midst of all of the news that, um, seems to be, doom and gloom, but there is hope when we see what can happen um, in a community like Boulder Valley School District. So um, that's, I think everybody should pat themselves on the back and say, hey, great work, let's keep going. So. Absolutely. And it's just, again, gigantic kudos to our educators, our students for the work they're yeah. doing. Yeah. Uh, I think every, it takes everybody to take, yeah. to take this on. Uh, Dr. Gita Carroll. Do you want to help us wrap this up? Sure. Thank you. Well, I would say that we, we do have our year-to-year -year actions mapped out for this new plan. It is a living document. It is um, on our website. So we welcome anybody to go check it out on the sustainability section of our website. Um, and we, more than that, we welcome your involvement. So like we've said over and over again, this is about everybody being engaged. Um, so happy to connect about ways that um, I know parents right now are talking about how they can help support the Green Star School at their program and you know it, it, it just takes everybody um, and we we have accomplished a lot but we know that there is still so much more to do so we're looking forward to amplifying our efforts and impact and um, building culture and community for this work and moving us toward a sustainable future um, so thank you thank you again for taking the time to spotlight this work and let's talk we really appreciate it you guys are all amazing. I, I'm, a, I'm in awe, uh, as Jenny was saying, I'm in awe of the work that you guys do. Um, and I do want to remind everybody to that point, there are some great you know, ways that you can get involved. As Amy mentioned, make sure you sign up your kid uh, to do the trip tracker. If your school participates, I encourage your school. If not, although I don't know how much more work that is for Amy, but uh, the more schools that participate, the better, right? Uh, uh, we definitely, uh, and the kids get so excited when they, when they get these dollars, they get to go cash them in for ice cream and all kinds of different things. So uh, I, know, I know my kids love that. 
Uh, additionally, uh, it, you know, as Gita was saying, uh, this report is out there. Please go check it out. Additionally, uh, Gita uh, and the Green BBSD has a Twitter account. They're always posting great stuff. Same thing with Safe Routes for Schools. Uh, our friends at EchoCycle, of course. Uh, I mean, follow all these guys. Uh, the work that's happening is outstanding. If you're interested, even a tad bit in sustainability, um, it, again, you'll be in awe every day if you're if you're watching these guys on social media. So thank you for that, uh, for, for keeping us all informed on that. Um, and finally, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in today. We hope you have a wonderful uh, week, and uh, thank you for joining us for Let's Talk Education.